Good morning, good morning, good morning, Mountainside. How are you this morning? I hope you are well. Now, I've said good morning to you. You gotta say it back. Let Terry know back there. Just say a good morning. Let us know you're there, because I know that we've got people tuning in again today from Texas, uh, and who knows what points around this country uh, that people are tuning into us this morning. So I do want to welcome everybody, whether you, whether you're uh, a member, a regular attendee of this church or not, you are welcome here at Mountainside and Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. A wonderful, wonderful place to be this morning, with one exception: you're not here. It is getting tough to not see your smiling faces here every Sunday morning and during the week. Uh, it's it's getting extremely tough. So I, before we even get into the prayer time, I'm going to ask you, pray for your pastor, because uh, I'm a patient person, but God didn't give me all the patience I need during this, uh, this pandemic. So please, pray for me uh, and, and pray for my attitude, because I miss you all greatly. I'm ready for you to be back here more than you're ready to be back here yourself. Just uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. I know there are many questions uh, that you have about uh, reopening. When are we reopening? I wish I had a date for you. I really do. Uh, the governor uh, this past week announced that we are going to phase two on Monday. Uh, the bishop has not given any guidance yet uh, on the uh, United Methodist Churches in the state of Arkansas as to when we will reopen. Uh, I am following that closely every day, and as soon as we get guidance from him, uh, then we will pass that along to you. Uh, the plan for reopening has been uh, been published. I've given it to the chair of our leadership committee and to our lay leaders. We'll be discussing it this next week in our leadership meeting. Uh, it's been approved. And it's already been sent to our district office. So we are ready to go. The, the sanctuary is set. Plans are set. Uh, and um, I'm, I know that you're ready to come back here. We're ready for a reopening. Uh, no matter what that looks like, no matter how many services we need to have, we're going to make sure that everybody can come and worship the Lord on Sunday morning. We will make those accommodations uh, with our our praise team, with our audiovisual, with our, our welcome committee, uh, we're going to make sure that, that people, members, attendees, and guests alike can come and worship God here in this beautiful, beautiful church. Uh, one announcement that I do have, uh, we're going to extend, as you saw in the uh, heartbeat uh, this past week, we're going to extend the adopt uh, a mission, uh, the sponsor a mission, uh, we are uh, well on our way to reaching our goal, but we're going to extend that to July 15th. Uh, July 15th, uh, just uh, about three or four more Sundays. Uh, I don't know how many that is, three or four. You can look on the calendar, but we're going to extend that just to make sure that you can get your uh, your donations in for the adopt -a mission and we can hit our goal of 7,500 uh, for this year to then turn around and sponsor those missions and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This church is so mission-minded. Uh, so let's keep up that mindset and do uh, do that donation to that program. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, a wonderful service here, recognizing Kate Skinner uh, as a graduate of the University of Arkansas. Some of you dropped off uh, gifts and cards for her. Uh, was able to present her with those and with a gift from the church. A couple more of you have dropped off gifts, uh, and I have them in my office. If any of you uh, still want to drop off a card or a gift for Kate, or just a note uh, saying how much that uh, that you are proud of her, uh, as this group has seen her grow uh, into the fine woman that she is, uh, drop those off here at the church Monday through Thursday, uh, and I will keep those in my office. And as they continue to come in, I'll call them and and uh, let Kate know she can come by and pick those up. So. Uh, we're going to hear this morning uh, Fox and Foles' new song. Now, we're not going to play it in its entirety. We're going to do a little marketing for Fox and Fole this morning, and we're going to play a little portion of that to let you hear that. Uh, but we thank Fox and Fole for allowing us to, uh, to play their music here. 
And this is a new one from Fox and Fold. So enjoy. And then after that, we will have our prayer time. Thank you. Thank you, Fox and Foal. Uh, the title of that song, if you're wondering, is I Am Yours. Uh, wonderful, wonderful song by Fox and Foal. And again, thank you. We're going to enter in a, into a prayer, a time of prayer this morning. And right now, before we even get into it, if you have a prayer need, or if you just want to write your prayer down uh, and, and kind of get it to us, uh, then go ahead and do that right now in the comment section down on the bottom uh, of your screen, uh, on your phone, whatever you're watching us on. And if you want a voice of prayer, uh, then I invite you to do that right now. And I'm going to take a pause while you voice your prayer to God. And then after you voice your prayer or your praise, uh, then you can just type to let us know uh, that you lifted up a prayer wherever you're at. Just type the word Amen in that comment bar and hit return. Amen. Amen. Uh, a few uh, prayer requests uh, and praises uh, that we were sent is, we've got one from Kathy Chandler. Uh, you know Kathy? Sings right there and then sits right there. See, I'm, I'm, I'm really missing you because now I'm starting to refer to you uh, wherever you sit. Uh, but Kathy, yeah, Kathy sits right there. Um, she is requesting friend, uh, prayers for her friend, uh, Raylan Hollingsworth Cockerham. Uh, she has COVID. Uh, she lives in Bryant. She's in the hospital, and she's on a ventilator. Now, this was sent in this past Monday. So, Kathy, if you're watching, uh, we lift up your friend in prayer this morning. Uh, give us an update. Please send me, a, send me an email and just let me know. Uh, and if you have any emails, let me just begin. Uh, I was remiss. Uh, if you have a, an, a prayer request, send that in to me to Mountainside Rev, Mountainside Rev at gmail.com. 
Uh, Kathy has known this uh, has known Ray Lynn uh, for over 50 years, uh, long time, lifelong friend. Uh, a couple of people that I want to make sure that you uh, put in your your calendar, put in your reminder system. Uh, Leonard Benstock is having surgery tomorrow, and Kathy Wright is having surgery tomorrow. So we want to pray, uh, beginning today, we want to pray for the, the surgical rooms, the surgical teams, uh, but most of all, we just want to pray that God will put peace in these two individuals' hearts and in the families. Uh, so and for Karen and for Steve, uh, that their spouses are going to be taken care of, and it's all going to be great. Um, Bill Hoke, uh, not a lot of you know, had some procedures done and some tests run. They all come back great. Uh, he did not send this in. Uh, if he's watching this morning, he may be shaking his head. He didn't want people to know, but that's, you know, that's what, uh, as I always say, the old southern term, uh, what did grandma say when she overcooked her noogies? Tough noogies. So, um, Bill is doing great. He's in Dallas this weekend. And uh, so all the tests came back negative, and that is a praise. Thank you, God. Uh, Brady Hobbs. Uh, Brady fills in for his dad. Sometimes back here on the drums, Brady was taken to the hospital uh, this past Thursday. Um, and he is home now. He's doing much, much better. Uh, can't give you all the details, uh, but uh, Brady is doing great. Keep Brady in your prayers. We pray for him. He's on our prayer list, but especially this week, do pray for pray for Brady uh, to get better and better. Uh, uh, Cindy, you don't see her. She sets off a camera, but she's here every Sunday. Um, she is not here this Sunday. Uh, you you can't see the chair, but she isn't here. Um, I'm gonna probably get in trouble for this one too, but uh, she has had an allergic reaction uh, to a brand new lotion uh, that she purchased, and it's uh, it's quite painful for her, uh, and it's quite irritating. Uh, she's been to the doctor twice. Uh, she's getting better, but still, I'd like for you, uh, the church, to pray for Cindy and pray for comfort because she's not in very much comfort right now. Uh, pray for her to have comfort and peace and for her to get better. So I, I you know, I, I personally ask you to pray uh, for my Cindy. Uh, and I have a praise uh, in my family. Um, my nephew, my brother-in-law's son, youngest son, was uh, went to work for an oil management company, uh, energy management company in the oil industry. Uh, hired on last August, graduated with honors from Tulsa, and then all of a sudden this oil thing happened. And he, you know, last first in or last in first out, uh, and he was he was caught up. He lost his job a couple of months ago. That, you know, just to to be a a, a young man uh, in his early twenties handled that very stoically and handled it very very well. And he was offered a position this past uh, this past Friday, I believe it was. Uh, that is not just meeting what he was making, but more than that. And it's going to be a much better situation. So God takes care of his people, and he definitely took care of Jonathan. And I'm so proud of him, and I wanted to mention that to you. That is a praise. So uh, if you still have a prayer uh, that you're going to voice, voice that and type amen. And we're going to go to God in prayer at this time. Bow with me, please. Father, uh, you know all things. You see all things. Lord, you know what's going to happen to us before we do ourselves. Faith. Faith is what we really need. And Lord, sometimes our faith falters. We don't have the faith that we need. Jesus, so many times... His own words said, Oh, you of little faith. Telling His disciples that if they had the faith of a mustard seed, they could move mountains. How small is that faith? Lord, forgive us when we falter in our faith every single day. Forgive us 
that we forget that you are in control of all things. We ask your humble forgiveness, Lord, where we fall short in our faith. Father, we want to lift up this week that we've just seen so much. I want to lift up this country to you. I want to lift up all people to you. Lord, I don't want to lift up uh, just certain people. I want to lift up our entire nation. Father, please heal our nation. Heal our nation. Let us treat each other with dignity, with respect. When Jesus said the two greatest commandments is love the Lord with all your, with all your heart, your, all your soul, your, all your mind, and all your spirit, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, He didn't say if that person was rich, or if that person was poor, or if that person drove a nice car, or if they had a nice fishing boat. No. He said, love your neighbor no matter who they are, and love them as you love yourself. Father, I pray for healing for our nation. I pray for our leaders, Lord, to get on the same page. Lord, help them in their decisions. Grant them the wisdom that they need. Wisdom from You, not their own. But may they recognize Your wisdom surpasses all. Father, for the many prayer requests that I voiced this morning and those that are being written out or those that are voiced at all of the different locations where, uh, where they're at, no matter where our people are at today, no matter where Your people are at today. Lord, hear our prayers and grant our prayers. Father, I thank You for the praises of the blessings of the people. Lord, we pray for uh, those uh, individuals. And then sometimes we forget to say thank you. So this morning, Lord, we do. We say thank you. Bad things happen to good people. But in the end, you will take those bad things and make them good. You will bring good outcomes from bad things. Father, I thank you that you're in control. I thank You so much. Father, in all of these things, we give You praise, we give You honor, and we give You glory. And we pray all of this in Your Son's name, Jesus Christ, as He taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, that is such a sweet, such a wonderful time of the service whether we're out here in this sanctuary or whether you're out at the locations. Prayer, God hears our prayer. And it's through the Holy Spirit that binds our hearts together no matter where we are, no matter how far, how far apart we are. We are still one in the kingdom, united through the Holy Spirit. We are, what was the name of the, the song again? I forget. Sagan Terry, we are yours. I forgot. I am yours. Uh, thank you for a little uh, allowing a little uh, forgetfulness there on the part of your pastor. Uh, I am yours. That was the name of the fox and foal. And I don't know if you're seeing what's on screen right now. It is based on a Wesley prayer. Tell, uh, Terry is telling me so. Uh, it's, you know, the fox and foal has its roots uh, in the Methodist church, and it shows through that song. I am yours. I am one of Jesus' names. What's in a name? 
the title of this morning's message, What's in a Name? We all like to be called by our name, don't we? We like hearing our name spoken or have someone call out to us using our name. But we like to have them spoke correctly, don't we? Just let someone mess it up or call us by the wrong name, and we'll correct them pretty quickly and say, Oh, bless your heart, and you didn't you didn't know my name or you forgot my name. Names are important. Names are important. Parents agonize over the names of their children before they are born. My oldest daughter, of which I have two, her name is Madison. M-A-D-D-I-S-O-N. Her mother and I put a great deal of thought and research into choosing, into the choosing and the spelling of her name. Because you see, classic research says that one D in the name Madison is the masculine spelling. And two Ds in the name Madison is the feminine spelling. Well, I'm old, so we did old research, and that's just the way it is. Now, for those of us that have dogs, we can call them by their name, and they'll immediately look at you. We can call them to our sides or call them to our laps using their name to get their attention. My favorite dog in my entire life was a full-size, big collie named Walter. Walter, what a dog's name. He was so regal looking though, when he would walk, his, his hair would just flow. And he had a great big long nose. Walter was smart, I'm telling you, and he knew a lot of commands. Most of all, Walter knew his name. Now, I go by Doug. Uh, for those tuning in for the first time, my name is Doug Walker. Uh, I go by Doug. But my given name, actual given name, is Douglas. It was one of my maternal grandfather's middle names. Matter of fact, my middle name is also uh, a derivative of one of his middle names. He had two. My middle name is Ray. But if I heard the name Douglas quickly followed by my middle name, Ray, as in Douglas Ray, I knew it wasn't good. We all respond to our name, and it's our identity. It's given to us. We grow up hearing it, and it's ours for life. Well, I learned very quickly in my life whether I was in trouble or not when I heard my name. Here's a question for you. I often have questions. Do you think Jesus knows our name? And He calls us by our name? In my last appointment, I used to do chapel for the little preschoolers. And I would tell those kids during chapel, if we have a question about God, we go to the answer book. We go to the Bible. So this morning, let's go to the answer book. We're going to be in the Gospel of John today. I'll be using some Scripture out of uh, the King James Version. But our Scripture primarily is going to come out of the New International Version this morning. And I just pray that this parable we're, parable we're about to read that that it just sinks into you. Obviously, we're going to see it didn't sink into some people, but I just pray that God speaks to you this morning through this parable. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but, by, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. 
The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A few of you know, or a few of you may know, the answer to this question. How many names are there for Jesus in the Old and New Testaments combined? Now, if you grew up with the same Bible that I did, and still quote scriptures from that version, the King James Version has 105 different names for Jesus. And I think you'll probably see some on screen right now. Here are just a few of his lesser known names. Morning Star, Rose of Sharon, Rabbi, the Vine, the Branch, Propitiation, Friend of Sinners, Commander, First and Last, Last Adam, Lord, Eternal Life, The Second Man, Living Bread, Unspeakable Gift, Shiloh, and the list goes on and on and on. Many, many names. We find another name that is not on your list this morning. We find another name in today's scripture. Did you pick up on it? In the King James Version, the name for Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 7 is the door. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now in the NIV, as we read, very, very, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. This obviously is a statement of truth that follows the parable that Jesus taught. Or, as verse 6 says, a figure of speech. And many times we see Jesus speaking in parables, teaching, and then explaining what the parable means with a statement of explanation. In this statement, Jesus calls himself the gate. Now, when you read a parable, there are two things that you've got to ask yourself. Why has Jesus spoken this parable, and to whom is he speaking? In this instance, he is speaking to the Pharisees. But we have to back up. We have to back up just a little bit, a verse or two, to see why Jesus is addressing them. The why. In verse 41 of chapter 9, it says this, Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. No doubt. No doubt that this went right over the heads of the Pharisees. Now, many of you will remember the story because I used it as con for context in one of my sermons. Remember the blind man, Jesus and his disciples encounter after leaving the temple and his disciple ask who sinned this man or his parents that he should be born blind Jesus said neither made mud with dirt and saliva put it on the man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam a pool inside the city walls the Pharisees saw what happened 
call the man and his parents in front of them, but then they became frustrated when they couldn't get either one of them to do what they wanted, which was basically denouncing Jesus and the messianic miracle. Yeah, remember? They dismissed the man, and he went home. But, but, Scripture tells us that he was followed by some of the Pharisees. We know this because in verse 40 it says, Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and ask, What? Are we blind too? That was their comment, their comeback. They are referring to a conversation Jesus was having with this previously blind man about seeing the Son of Man with his brand new eyes for the first time. For what Jesus is telling them in the parable we've read this morning, basically, he is telling them three things. No, they are not blind, and therefore their sins remain. He's telling them exactly who he is, and that they are robbers and thieves, and his sheep will never follow them or their voices. First, Jesus tells them that they are not blind and they are still sinners. Their sin remains. He was doing a couple of things by answering them in this fashion. As we can tell by the disciples' question to Jesus in chapter 9, it was a popular belief that sins, physical infirmities, uh, were caused by sin and they were passed down from generation to generation. Jesus disputed this long held belief passed down by the religious elite themselves by saying, by answering the disciples' question, neither this man nor his parents sinned. The Pharisees could see the gate, the Son of Man standing right in front of them. They could see the many miracles. And they even heard His words. When Jesus used and referred to the prophets, yet their sins remained. And they refused to believe. Now here's a side note. Here's a side note. If you look real deep into the Gospels, you will see this. When Jesus spoke to the Sadducees, He most often referenced the Torah, what they studied, the first five books of the Bible that they knew so well. And when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, he used the books of the prophets. They knew so well. Jesus referenced language they should have known and been familiar with. In his interaction with the Pharisees we see today, Jesus tells them basically that they are essentially spiritually and scripturally blind. Second, Jesus tells them that He is the gate into the sheep pen. That only through the gate can they or anyone else enter the pen. Now, I wish I had some pictures to show you. Sheep pens were either built up against a house or a dwelling, or in a cave. And if they were built just outside with nothing around them, they were usually built with very high stone walls. But the only way into the pen, no matter its design, was through one gate. Now when all of the sheep are in the pen, at night, the shepherd actually lays down and sleeps across that gate. Or it says, or as it says in the King James Version, 
the door. And nobody or nothing can get into that pen. To enter, you have to go through the gate or be allowed in by the shepherd. Boy, I've got to take a, a sidestep here and just ask you, are you one of the Lord's sheep? Do you feel safe? Because He's not going to let anything or anybody get into to you because He is the gate into that holy pen. Praise God. Lastly, Jesus tells the Pharisees gathered around that if they try to get to His sheep, to His flock, by climbing over the walls, they are nothing more than thieves and robbers. Here's the question. And you know me, I kind of look at things a little strange. But once they're in their pen, once they're inside the pen, how do they expect to get out without causing a ruckus? Anyway, in the sheep pen, the shepherd functioned as the door or the gate, letting the sheep in and protecting them. But Jesus, by giving them the benefit of the doubt, tells them, tells those who would be robbers and thieves, even if they can find a way to get in, to get the sheep out, the sheep will not follow them. He tells them they will only follow the voice they know and will run from the voice they do not know. Do you know Jesus' voice today? Follow Him. Follow the shepherd. The shepherd has such a close relationship with the sheep. He even calls them by their names and leads them out, as it said in verse 3. After telling the Pharisees this analogy, to which they still, they still did not understand, he comes right out and says, I am the gate for the sheep. Period. And in the verses following today's scripture, he goes as far as to tell the Pharisees this. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. Read that again. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to him. Listen to them. Jesus calls the disciple and those following him sheep. His sheep. And he is their shepherd. And calls the Pharisees shepherds who have come before him. Now, at this point. Light bulbs should have been going off in the Pharisees' minds concerning the prophet. The prophets that they should know so well, but specifically the prophet Jeremiah. A book they should have known. Beginning in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1, it says, Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care upon them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done. This punishment Jeremiah is referring to is the destruction of the temple and the scattering of the nation of Israel in 70 A.D. Basically wiping out the need for the, for the Sadducee, Sadducees excuse me, and the religious elite from history from that point on. Jesus is called by many names in the Old and the New Testaments. Today He's called the gate of the door. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. That sounds like a pretty good description for a door, doesn't it? 
We have to go through Jesus to be connected to the Father. There's just no other way. I'd like to point out one more verse to show another connection to this. To this name, Jesus, we've been looking at today. Turn all the way back to the back, the last book in the Bible. Revelation 4, 1 says this. After I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here. I will show you what must take place after this. John, in his spirit, went up and went through the door, the only way into heaven. And it was Jesus' voice that opened that door. You know, there's a lot of false teachings today about how to get to heaven. Some say if you're a good person or if you're just nice to people, you'll go to heaven. Others say it doesn't matter if you're good or bad. You're going to go to heaven because God is so loving. He will let everyone in. Well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. But according to Jesus' own words, there is only one way to the Father and everlasting life in heaven. And it is through Him. Through Him, the door. If you're looking for a way to eternal life, I tell you today, Jesus, in His many names, is the way. He is the truth. And He is the life. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me, please. Father, I thank You for Your Word this morning. I thank You that we can picture before us a door. And Jesus is that door. Jesus is the way to You. And by accepting Him, that door is open. And through the Holy Spirit, Father, we can have a relationship directly with You. Jesus is our High Priest. So representative of the Old Testament that it was the High Priest was the way to God. Jesus is our High Priest and has opened the door for us. And I thank You, Father, that He is just that. Lord, thank You for the message this morning and thank You for the words of Your Son as He taught us He is the only way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. It's been a good day. It would have been a better day if you would have been here. But you know, we do what we've got to do. Uh, and we're going to continue to do this uh, as long as necessary. And then when we start gathering back in here uh, again, uh, there will be some of you that, that may not feel comfortable in coming back right away. And guess what? That's okay. That is okay. Uh, we will still continue to broadcast on Facebook Live uh, and continue to reach not only Hot Springs Village, but we're going to reach into Texas and Missouri and Illinois and Louisiana. Uh, and I've also uh, been given a hint that our new uh, district superintendent that will be coming in has already worshipped with us. Uh, and uh, I hopefully one day she'll be able to come and worship with us uh, in this beautiful sanctuary. Have a good week. Reach out to me. Let me know your prayer requests. Let me know your praises uh, that you want voiced to your Mountainside family. Uh, and I will do that next Sunday morning. My office is open during the week. And it is set up uh, at the 6 foot, the 8 foot, the 12 foot distances. So if you want to come in and just sit down and talk. Uh, we have hand sanitizer, we've got masks, uh, we've got it all. But if you just want to come in and sit down and talk, come on. I am there. Give me a shout. Let me know you're coming. And uh, we will.